presenter um, so that we don't accidentally get um, uh, too much you know, noise so that uh, people can't hear the presentation. So please do keep yourself muted. And if you want to, um, uh, uh, if you have a question, you want to uh, say something, there is kind of like a, I believe there's a raise your hand kind of feature in here. Um, well, there's chat. There's chat. Yeah, there you go. So you can use the chat and, and, and you know, um, the, the moderate, not the moderators, the, uh, the organizers and myself will, will kind of keep our eyes in there. Um, I think we're, we're probably a small enough group that we can just kind of unmute ourselves when we have a question and, and try and jump in. Um, I think that that'll work uh, okay. And if it doesn't, we'll pop in and say, hey, it's not working. And we'll, we'll you know, go ahead and use the chat to, uh, to get our attention. Um, uh, we're going to go around in a minute and, and have everybody kind of wave. Um, if you'd like to introduce yourself, please do. Um, and then uh, do let us know if you are hiring uh, and or looking to be hired uh, so that people can kind of uh, uh, try and connect those dots. Um, that's something we've been doing at these meetups for a long time. Uh, We'll have a couple announcements right after that, and we'll go through, and then um, it's time for presentations. Uh, afterwards, we're going to see what happens when we try and virtually socialize uh, over um, uh, over Google Hangouts and, and see how that goes. And uh, hopefully everybody learns something and uh, makes your apocalypse just a little bit nicer. That's the point. <laughs> Sounds good? All right. Sounds good. Sound good. Um, I don't know what the best way is to go through this. I guess I'm just going to kind of shout people's names out and, and you can introduce yourself. So whoever EKNY house is, I'm going to go, I'm going to go top to bottom. You want to say hi, tell us if you're hiring or asking to be hired or none of the above. And of course, uh, remember to unmute yourself uh, if you're speaking because everyone's yeah. probably, um, so you got to hit that unmute button. And um, certainly, we encourage everybody to share your video if you feel comfortable doing that. We'd love to make this as you know close as possible to our, our in-person meetups, uh, where we get to see each other. And uh, yeah, rock on. Yes, what JD said, all of that is true. All right, um, if, you're, if you're a bit shy, that's okay. Carlos, Carlos Coto, want to wave and say hi? Hi guys, you guys hear me okay? Yeah, excellent. Great, Car Carlos Cotto, I used to go to the meetings in New York. When I worked there, I'm working uh, We're not hiring, I'm not looking, so I guess we're still, that's we're it. I'm, I'm, uh, Carlos Cotto, I'm, I'm Carlos WWE on, uh, on uh, GitHub and uh, on most, on, on Drupal also, so that's all I have for now. All right, uh, chorus note taker. I feel like that's uh, not someone's legal name. I think that's our recorder. Fantastic, Chris Johnson. While I do this, if everybody wants to click the little people button okay. at the top, right? then you'll kind of see when you're coming. Oh, there's Chris. How are you doing, Chris? Hello. Uh, let's see. I'm just starting to get into Drupal 8 and Composer after doing Drupal 7 stuff for a long time. So I'm just hoping to learn some uh, fascinating stuff that I didn't know before. All right. Good to have you. Good. <laughs> Thank you. DeVito. Yes, hi. Um, I'm in Sydney, Australia. And I thought this meeting was at 6 a.m. in the morning, but uh, apparently it isn't. <laughs> um, I'm a Drupal developer, uh, Drupal 7 only uh, at this point, and uh, I'm hiring. I'm actually looking for a Drupal coach. So I'll um, put the link in, uh, down below, and then um, anyone who's, who's, who's willing to help me uh, in coaching in developing for Drupal 7, that would be fantastic. I've been um, working with Drupal since, I think, since 2007, uh, Drupal 4, I think. Thank you. All right, Eleanor. Hello. 
give Eleanor a second. Oh, she's saying hi in the chat. Hi, Eleanor. All right. Um, Eric Saad. Can you hear me? Yep, we hear you. Excellent. I'm on the phone. Yeah, I couldn't get the video uh, working. My camera is uh, trapped is somewhere else. So just that's about what I look like. That's a few years ago. Um, <laughs> let's see. I'm not. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm not hiring and I'm not looking to be hired. Uh, I've been coming to this meetup uh, for a long time now. And I'm glad that we're here today because, you know, even if even if we're apart, we can still try to be together. Awesome. All right. Holing. Oh, wait, <laughs> I'm here. Um, my name is Hoang. I'm with the Neuro Public Library. Um, I think we're still hiring, but not IT specific or digital specific. We're, we're always do. And uh, I'm not looking at this minute. <laughs> yeah. All right. Jacob. S sorry. Uh, hey. Oh, I'll turn my video on. I'm just not, I'm under the weather like many New Yorkers are going to be. Oh, see, there, there's me. Uh, yep, yeah, I'm Jake Rockwood. has been going to the meetup for a decade or so. Uh, I don't know, kind of looking forward to seeing the change of format, to see different speakers come in from out of town and talk to the New York community and vice versa. I see this, I'm trying to see things as an opportunity more than a problem. Um, Cause this is an interesting opportunity where a meetup could maybe go virtual one or two sessions a year and get speakers from outside to come in. And I think that could actually help grow communities because you can get speakers who are of special subject matter experts and stuff like that. So anyway, that's my stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off my video and mute myself. Bye-bye. I hope you feel better, but I, I like yeah. the sentiment. All right, Jared Herzog. Hey everyone, uh, you can call me Jed. I uh, love the meetup and I think this is a lot of fun to be on virtually. I uh, work uh, with a company called Linkwell Health, and while I'm not looking, um, I, uh, my company did have to lay off a digital project manager. She was not able to join tonight, but I wanted to put a plug out for her. She's very specific with Drupal, been working with our Drupal products for years. Um, you know, she's not a coder, but she's a great project manager, and she understands Drupal. So if anybody needs a project manager out there, get in touch with me. I'll get you in touch with Elmo. She's awesome. Um, and I hope everybody's doing well. Stay healthy. All right. Uh, who we have next here? JD? Um, I'm not familiar. J JD? Who's that? Yeah. I don't know, JD. <laughs> hey, everyone, I'm JD. Um, I'm one of your, uh, your, your faithful organizers here. And um, yeah, this uh, new meetup format's interesting. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with us. Thanks for successfully making it here. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh, how we uh, can kind of improve upon this uh, next time, because there will be a next time uh, next month. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, and uh, I am uh, certainly looking uh, to be hired. Uh, I'm a freelancer. I do backend uh, Drupal development um, for a long, long time. So if anyone out there is looking for a uh, contract worker, uh, vendor, your guy. All right. Uh, Jeff. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff Markell, and I am neither hiring nor looking to be hired. I'm a development manager and architect at J&J, &J, and uh, hopefully our vaccine will be ready pretty soon. So. Uh, Stay tuned for that. Are you promising anything immediately? Are you making any <laughs> commitments that you can't keep? Um, I'm <laughs> not, not, promising, not promising anything at all. On, only saying that we're, we're working on stuff. <laughs> all right. I, I ho hopefully, uh, everybody, you know, uh, give, uh, give uh, an extra, you know, I I I had a, a fully formed sentence in my head before that started, and it just kind of fell out halfway through, and I don't know what quite happened there. It happens from time to time. Do you have a drink? Is is there a drink sitting on your desk, Alex, that we can't see? N not that I'm going to show anybody. Um, 
it's been it's been interesting, you know, for everybody working from home and and doing kids schooling stuff, and it's you know it's it's messing with my brain a little bit. Anyway, let's go on to uh, uh, Job. I think is next, right? Sure, I'll go next. Hi, everybody. My name's Job. It looks like Job. Uh, it's a weird name because I'm a weird guy. And I'm very new to Drupal, new to New York. I work for Pantheon, who many of you have heard of. Uh, excited to be here. I like what Jay Rock said that I think this is a really unique opportunity for development, learning, community, and I am uh, excited to be here. All right, uh, glad to have you. Um, Jonathan is next. Hi, I'm Jonathan Sibley, and uh, I do Drupal development on the side for my own websites. I'm an executive coach here in New York and just interested in Drupal, getting better at it. All right. Um, Kay Ramirez. Hey, guys. Can you hear me? Yep. Hey, so this is Kermit Ramirez. Uh, Kermit like the frog. I've uh, been to a couple of Drupal meetups. been going for a few years now. Um, I work at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Uh, I manage the patient and caregiver education section of the site, um, working alongside Eric and uh, Jake. Um, and yeah, just happy that we're able to meet again this month, virtually. All right. Good to have you as well. Chris. All right, I think Chris is uh, being a little shy. That's okay. We still love Chris. Um, uh, Leora. No. All right. Whoop. Uh, Let's see. Who's after me? Or Matthew, you want to say hi? Oh, there's Leora. Hold on. Leora, say hi. Oh, wait. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought I um, I thought I thought turned the mic on. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm Leora. Um, I work for the New York MTA, and I live in New Jersey, so I usually go to the Princeton meetup, so this is a great opportunity to go to the New York meetup. All right. Glad to have you. Thanks. All right, Matt. Matt's on mute. Give him a second. All right, maybe Niraj. Oh, no mic or camera, says Matthew Stein. All right, everybody, now is your chance to say whatever you've wanted to say about Matthew Stein. Go. No, I'm kidding. All right, Niraj, what do you got? You want to say hello? Hi, this is Niraj Gali. I work for I Heard Media. Um, I work on back and front end and both. And uh, I, joined, love, I love joining Meetup. All right. Glad you're here. Um, Kruzi, I hope I'm saying it correctly. Hey, this is Kruzi. Can you, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah, hi, this is Kruzi. Yeah, I'm just kind of like a Drupal developer, like work on the back end stuff. So right now, like I'm kind of like interested to attend all the meetups because I need to grab some knowledge about the Drupal eight. Yeah, interested to know about the, all the things. Sounds good. Welcome, uh, Ray. No, oh, there he is. Actually, it looks like uh, this is Diane. I'm not. For how I got his name in here, but <laughs> oh, me so I'm the one that's been coming to the Drupal meetup. <laughs> well, well um, glad to have you, Diane. Go ahead. <laughs> so I'm digging into Drupal eight basically right now, trying to get my handle around it. I uh, had worked in Drupal six for a while, then went away, and I'm back. All right, sounds good. Uh, Scott. Hey, how are you doing? Scott Walpo. I do some Drupal, some React Native, MongoDB. Um, 
looking for any new projects since my main clients <clears throat> all put me on furlough for now since they have no money coming in. So, uh, I think that's been a new status for a little while. But uh, I think this is a still a great way of doing the meetup. We're getting a much, a much more diverse people. People can't get into Manhattan now come online. I don't say this should be the new norm, but it could be another um, thing we do once a quarter as they get people from around the world, you know, exchanging ideas. All right. Thank you, Scott. Scott, for those of you who don't know, has been coming to these meetups for 72 years. Yep. Since 1939. No. Uh, Sean. Hi, okay. I'm Sean Duncan. I'm a uh, chair of Drupal NYC. Um, I want to thank Alex, who's our deputy chair, and uh, Scott's our secretary, and Aling's our treasurer. Um, and I didn't necessarily yet um, see Chris or Garvita, but um, they're the rest of the board, and, and uh, we're pleased to figure out a way to get together, even when we can't get together. Um, I'm a technical architect with, with Digital Pulp, uh, an agency in Manhattan. Um, we're neither hiring nor am I looking. Um, uh, but um, I'm looking forward to, to what our presenters tonight have to say. All right. So this is my fault. I meant Sean Walsh. It's okay. I didn't oh, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry for stepping on you there, Sean Walsh. Uh, it's all right. Happy to be confused with you, Father Sean. Uh, I'm Sean. Uh, I run to co-organize the uh, New Jersey meetup and also Duke Camp New Jersey. We did a virtual one of these last month, and we're doing one next week, I think, next Thursday, something like that. Um, so um, yeah, uh, excited to be able to attend because traveling into the city is generally like a once in a blue moon kind of opportunity for me. All right, glad you're here. And you guys have an event coming up, a virtual event coming up, don't you? Uh, yeah, next Thursday. All right. Yep, there we go. Um, Shankar. Hi, guys. Uh, this is Shankar here. Um, so I've been with Drupal for almost 12 plus years. Um, so I've been working with uh, NBC Universal for the last five years, and we've been developing a couple of uh, Drupal projects for our sports team. Um, so that's my background. I mean, now I'm looking for a change, not immediately, maybe in a couple of months. So if anyone has an interesting opportunity, yeah, please feel free to reach out. Thank you. All right. Um, Ted Bowman. Yeah, uh, thanks. I am uh, live in Ithaca, New York. Uh, I've come to a lot of the events uh, over the years in since 2010 in Drupal in New York City. Um, so thanks for doing this. And yeah, I'm presenting tonight and looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, I'm glad that uh, you guys are, are doing this. It's really nice. Awesome. All right. Oh, oh, I forgot to say also, Acquia is, I work for Acquia. Acquia is hiring. Um, there's a lot of positions that are listed as Boston. Maybe they'd be more uh, flexible considering <laughs> everybody's working from home anyways. So I put the link in the chat. And let me know if you have questions about positions. A lot of like Drupal, but a lot of like non-Drupal JavaScript stuff, like different different stuff. So. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Ted. Uh, Tom, you're up next. Want to say hello? Give him a sec. Uh, all right, we're going to move on to uh, uh, Vastil. Hi, guys. You can call me Vast. It's very difficult for my name to pronounce. Yeah, I'm here on my improvised standing desk, and I'm very glad that this is happening. Uh, so I'm a Drupal developer for nine, eight plus years now. Um, I'm also a technical project manager slash scrum master, and I'm working on projects. I'm also a freelancer, so if anyone has, anyone has an interesting project, I'm here to help. Also, I'm glad that I'm also part of the Drupal Count Camp NYC 2020 organizing team. So that's happening soon. So yeah, nice to meet you all. All right, 
Sounds good. And then, uh, so that's that's everybody going through the list, but I'm, I'm sure a couple people here or there joined while we were going through. Is there anybody else who wants to uh, just say hi? Tell us about yourself. Hi, this is Walt Daniels. Uh, just uh, oh. clicked the wrong button and, and signed off and had to sign back on. Uh, the uh, I've been in Drupal since 4.7. Uh, I'm one of the older members of the community. I'm not either hiring nor hireable. All right. Anybody else? I, uh, I'll jump in. So my name is Daryl Sutlight. I've been with the Drupal community since Drupal 7 um, was brand new. Uh, worked on 6, 7, and 8 um, at the moment. Uh, my title is Manager of Projects for Cognizant Technologies, but I'm basically a technical architect. And I should have the world's fastest lightning talk today. All right. That, 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 he, he just threw down. Let's see how... Uh... How that goes. I once did a lightning talk in this group in uh, in 90 seconds. So let's see what happens. All right. I'm going to take over presenting real quick. Um, present now. Thing. Well, uh, Alex, while you're getting that set up, uh, I'll just mention everyone. We've got some extra time uh, at the end of the meetup. Uh, one of our presenters wasn't able to make it tonight. Um, so if anybody wants to give a lightning talk, a little impromptu lightning talk, uh, you are more than welcome. Um, so uh, yeah, get uh, whatever preparation done that you want to do for that, if any. All right. So uh, let's move on to the announcements a little bit. Um, so some housekeeping. We already mentioned this, but it's worth mentioning again. Please keep yourself on mute. Um, uh, uh, if, you, if you find yourself... Um, you know, having a side conversation with somebody who you're kind of uh, quarantining with or phone rings or anything like that. We want to make sure that we're not interrupting the, the presenters. So please make sure you stay on mute. If you've got a question or comment, you want to you want to pop in. I think, you know, it's been going fine with uh, people. Just unmute yourself, ask your question at the appropriate times. And uh, and we'll, we'll we'll see how that continues to work. Um, there are restrooms there on. No, I'm kidding. Um, that's usually on the housekeeping slide. Uh, let's see, today's talk. Um, so I think John is the one who uh, wasn't able to make it today. Um, is that right? Am I making that up? Uh, uh, we think John might show up, we'll see. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so Ted is from, from Ithaca is gonna be, live from Ithaca is gonna be talking about the new layout builder. Uh, I know he's been working on this for a long, long time, um, and uh, and it does some really cool stuff. So, uh, looking forward to that one. And then I haven't seen John yet, but hopefully John makes it and is going to talk about some um, composer packages that uh, that he's been using for testing. And Alex, uh, I'm sorry, I'll step in here. Uh, I made a mistake here, and I have to apologize to Daryl. Uh, Daryl uh, Steplight will also be presenting, uh, and we've got a slide later in the deck that uh, does include him. <laughs> sorry, Daryl. So yeah, Daryl's going to be doing his fa the world's fastest lightning talk, but we're going to see if he'll break my 90-second record. Um, uh, today's meetup organized by these fine-looking folks here. Um, if you have any um, suggestions or if you are um, uh, looking to present in, on a, fu you know, a future uh, uh, meetup or you want to get involved in some way, these are some great people for you to reach out to. Um, uh, Bleen is not actually my last name, um, but that's okay. I am I am Bleen to this group, um, and uh, yeah, so definitely you know uh, uh, use the chat feature. We're also in Slack, which I think is our next piece here. Yep, um, we're also in Slack. You can always reach the, the organizers on Slack. We're all there. Uh, we're all happy to um, to uh, uh, hear whatever thoughts you have on on the group, on the meetup, on other events on you know ways of, of making you know what we do that much better um so please uh yeah if you if you haven't already join our our slack channels um the drupal association we always make it a point to um, bring up the drupal association the drupal association and i imagine now more than ever really does rely on the support of the the drupal community um i'm i'm my understanding is that 
uh, DrupalCon is, um, I don't know if it's postponed or canceled at this point, North America. It's but not legally postponed, but it's practically postponed. They're waiting to get out of their contract. Yeah. So um, that is by far the biggest, um, the, the biggest fundraiser every year for the Drupal Association. Um, I'm sure that they're, you know, they're they'll be reaching out and, and whatnot. But hopefully, everyone can 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 keep supporting them. Um, they are responsible for Drupal.org. They're responsible for um, growing our community, and making sure it stays strong and healthy, and, and making sure that uh, the Drupal project continues to, um, you know, to grow and be successful. Um, there's, you know. A, a, a hundred examples of things that if the Drupal Association wasn't stepping in and and really helping out and, and helping to lead on those fronts, um, that our 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 world as Drupal developers and users of Drupal and whatnot would be so much harder or, or not even you know doable at all. So please <laughs> become a member of the Drupal Association um, and uh, uh, help them out and, and uh, you know just remember they're they're helping you out. So. Yeah, to, and to just chime in with, with Alex on that, they recently posted a, a blog post. Um, mm -hmm. uh, they don't know what's going to happen with DrupalCon at the moment, but depending upon what happens, the Drupal Association is facing a 400000 to $1.1 million shortfall for fiscal year 2020. Um, so uh, the Drupal community worldwide is big. Um, so if everyone became a member, um, I'm sure it would go a long way towards preventing that from happening. So yeah. Um, so is that sort of all from that disaster that caused the um, the stopping of sponsoring of camps? No, the the as Alex said, the, far and away the largest uh, source of revenue for the Drupal Association is sponsorships and attendance at DrupalCon. Right, and um, if it's able to go on later in the year, um, uh, that will mitigate it. Um, many of the premium sponsors have said we don't want our sponsorship money back, whether it happens or not, which is helping. Um, but uh, I not long ago was able to rejoin the Drupal Association, and uh, I invite you to to join me in in joining that. Because you know, just imagine not having Drupal.org. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let, yeah, it's happening let, in May. Okay. All right. Go on. Sorry. Let, 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 let's continue. Um, we, we can talk more about that at the end if we want to get into the uh, the inner workings of, of how DrupalCon is going to continue or not. Um, yeah, Alex, let's just add that to an item at the end. I, I think it's a really important one. That's all. Yeah. Yep. Let's just agree that that'll be the first open topic if we have a chance. Okay. Yep. Um, so there are some upcoming events. Obviously, the status of these events will be you know in flux. Um, but if you're interested, you should you know at least mark them on your calendar and um, mark down the URL so that you can figure out um, uh, what's going on as it gets a little bit closer and and hopefully be able to attend some of these. Um, so we we did talk a little bit about DrupalCon um, that, that's scheduled to be in Minneapolis in, in a little over a month. Um, certainly, that will be uh, at the at best postponed. Um, but stay tuned to the various kind of, you know, to Drupal.org and to the various Twitter accounts and stuff like that to, to find out more. Um, uh, decoupled Days, uh, which focuses really on decoupled um, uh, uh, development, um, splitting up the front end from the back end, um, is scheduled for um, mid-July, July 22nd, 23rd. Um, we have GovCon, Drupal GovCon, which always takes place in the, the DC area, um, is in Bethesda, the end of July, 28th and 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st. Um, uh, Drupal Camp Atlanta, which is a, a fairly sizable camp every year, um, is, is taking place in early September. Uh, Baltimore, also in September. Um, and then Drupal Camp NYC, uh, we're shooting for October, November. Um, we're still TBD on dates and, and how that's going to go. Uh, obviously, um, we're, we're paying close attention to what's going on in the world. Um, but stay tuned. There will certainly be more news. I don't know, Sean, if you wanted to, to jump in and say anything more about Drupal Camp NYC. Um, no, but our lead organizer, Vassal, might want to have something to say about it. Ah, Vassal. Do you have anything you would like to say about Drupal Camp NYC? He's on mute. All right. If 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 you're you're gonna jump in later, perhaps at the end you can jump in with some more more stuff. If there's uh, we've got a slide later. We have a slide later. All right. Hold on. I missed that. Yeah. Sorry, but I'll, I'll jump to the slide. Perfect. 
Go for it. You want me now or later? Yep. This, slide? This, is, this is the slide. Take take it on. Go for it. Sure. Okay. So yeah, as I mentioned before, when I was introducing myself, we're organizing uh, Drupal Camp NYC 2020. So we're still working on the venue, the sponsors, and everything about the logistic, but it is happening. We are very uh, good and determined group of people. So uh, yes, we will we'll follow with updates very soon. All right, sounds good. Okie doke. Next, we have Drupal, uh, DrupalNYC.org. This is our site. Um, it's definitely could use a little bit of love. Um, if anybody has um, a little bit of free time, uh, wants to help improve that site, uh, please join um, our Slack channel, contact JD um, or any of the organizers, um, and uh, and we'll make sure that uh, that you can get involved. We're, we're you know looking for for somebody who can you know really just kind of step in and, and just make some small improvements to start um, uh, so hopefully we can get somebody with a, with a little bit of spare time while they're working from home um, but uh, do let us know and Alex also I think uh, it's a great opportunity if you are maybe not so super confident with Drupal you want to get yeah. your hands dirty uh, we would love to help mentor you and get you involved and help you you know level up your Drupal skills so don't be shy all right. OK, sounds good. Uh, interested in speaking, right? We're always looking for good speakers. We do, we do presentations at, at, at pretty much any length you can think of. We do lightning talks, which are you know, a minute, two minutes, five minutes, sometimes even 10 minutes. We do you know, kind of full length, you know, keynote sized presentations that are, you know, could be uh, you know, 45 minutes long um, and a anywhere in between. Um, if you have a topic that you're really passionate about, um, you know, let's let's do that and uh, talk to us, and, and you know, let's uh, let's get you an opportunity to uh, to do that presentation. Um, if there's a topic you're really interested in, we want to hear about that also. If there's something that we're just not covering, and, and you know, you're really hoping somebody can step in and, and talk about you know something you know theming, we haven't talked about theming in a long time, or something like that. Um, let us know, and and that that really does help us as we kind of uh, you know talk with um, people who, who present these kinds of things and see you know what experts you know and, and what members of the Drupal community um, and especially to to I think you know uh, Jake's point earlier now that we're remote at least for the foreseeable future um, it may be uh, you know we may have different opportunities to bring in speakers from all over the world um, much more easily so let's uh, let's make sure that you're, you're communicating with our, um, our organizers you can email speak at drupalmyc.org. You can come into um, Slack, ping one of us, and uh, let's see what we can do. We're always looking for good speakers. And here we go. All right, we're going to turn it over to Ted Bowman, who's going to talk about the new layout builder. All right, it's been a while since I've uh, presented on Drupal Meet. So, present. Uh, so, it says Alex Rossin presenting. Yeah. Right. Can I? I'm gonna stop what? sharing. Okay, now I gotta present now. And then you can share. Your entire screen, hopefully it's gonna let me choose the one I want. All right, people see my screen? Perfect. Okay, great, so um, yeah, feel free to stop me on the during the presentation or if you see somebody has a question in Slack and I don't, or not Slack, in the chat and I don't see it, um, Feel free to stop me. Uh, yep, so this is a Layout Builder Unleash the Power. Um, I'm Ted Bowman, Principal Software Engineer at um, Acquia. I'm the co-maintainer of Layout Builder and the Settings Tray Module. I'm working on Drupal 9 preparation now. I'm Ted Bo on Twitter and Drupal.org. So thank, thanks, y'all, for uh, doing this. It really means a lot. Um, yeah, just been coming to the events every once in a while for a like almost 10 years now, and it's always been great to come down to the city and look forward to doing it again when I can. Um, come to Cornell Drupal Camp sometime in fall 2020. Uh, no date set, and with all the stuff going on, I'm sure they're not gonna pick a date anytime soon, but pretty sure it'll happen in 2020. Uh, I, I'm part of the Drupal Acceleration team, uh, working on Drupal 9 Preparation Layout Builder. 
Um, also, feel free to stop me. I'm not sure how much when I should plan to stop. Um, but yeah, so if anybody knows now or just wants to stop me at some point. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so what does Layout Builder do? Uh, it's a flexible layout builder, of course. It previews in your default theme. Uh, a lot of what I'm going to show tonight is you know, connecting views and other blocks um, to your entity displays. It allows entity customization, and it's a powerful page builder. Um, so some of the major things is uh, so default content templates. Um, so we're going to go through these quick, and then I'll show some sort of concrete examples. Uh, One-off layoffs for any particular piece of content. Um, landing pages, these are really just a special type of override. Um, so, so it's partially live demo um, and partially slides. So uh, we're going to use the demo umami theme as a, sort of a, a way to present stuff. Um, this, I've, I've been doing this presentation before. Now umami, the demo theme actually, sorry, the demo profile of Umami actually uses Layout Builder, so it's actually a good way to look in. I think it's for recipes. If you install Umami, you can um, see how they used Layout Builder for uh, the recipe display. So let's look at default content templates. We're going to look at the recipes uh, display for Umami. So over on the left is actually is not what umami has now but it's basically what it had before it started using the layout builder and we're gonna sort of start from that and look how we can turn it into something on the right um all right so i'm actually gonna demo that's my cue to demo um can you all see the um uh the umami screen now yes Great. OK, so recipes. So this is my umami that's done that I didn't make. So I have two versions, one that I'm going to sort of show as um, what it is, sort of how they made it, in, in this case, in Layout Builder, in other cases, to show how they made it without Layout Builder and how you could hopefully make it better with Layout Builder. Um, so we have the image here over on the right. We have some information about it. Then we have ingredients over here and then recipe instructions. So I'm going to pop over to my um, version of the site without Layout Builder on and look at a recipe. Um, and so if you aren't using something like panels or using more complex templates, um, you're going to see just sort of what Drupal core gives you out of the box is just the ability to uh, just have things in a big long list. And, you know, obviously that's not how most websites you want to look. So we're going to see how we can sort of transfer this into something like this with Layout Builder. So we're going to go to content types um, and we're going to enable it for recipes. So we're going to go to manage display. Usually, um, when I'm using Layout Builder, you would just do the default view mode. But because of the way sort of historically um, uh, Umami was made, they use the full, they have a custom display for full content. So if you have custom display for full content view mode, you have to turn on Layout Builder there. So let's turn that on. Um, right, let's. Let's not turn on this right away. So right now, we're not going to be able to have each recipe have its own layout. But we'll show how and why you might do that later. So as soon as you do that, you're sort of the regular field display is taken away from you. And you have this Manage Display or Manage Layout button. Um, so we're going to sort of turn this again into sort of a multi-column thing. So Layout Builder works on your regular fields, your regular field formatters that you would use in Manage Display, but it has uh, this added concept of sections and columns. So uh, one thing I do like to do when I'm doing working on this is often I like to turn off the content preview because it's a lot easier to drag fields around and to see what's going on. But you can turn it back on if you want to see a preview. So the first thing is we want to split up the image on the left and then the, and sort of the difficulty level preparation time and everything on the right. So I'm going to add a new 
uh, section down at the bottom. So Drupal core, whoa, I must have a module that on that's not in core. Hmm, I forgot about that. Anyways, we're gonna do a two column here. So I'm gonna add a two column section. And when you add a section, you get very um, different widths combinations. Um, I think I'm gonna use the 50-50 for this one. We can add a label if we want to, but um, it gives us just a default label on the screen if we don't. Um, so we want to add now the image field over here and some, oh, actually, I don't want that. I want a three column. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm going to add the, nope, I'm gonna add a three column section and we're going to do 50, 25, 25. We're gonna add this. And so now I could add a field block and I could look for the media field, but I know I already have it on this page somewhere, which is right here. Dragging big images is kind of unwieldy. So I am going to turn off the content preview so that I can just grab the field pretty easily and drag it over to this section here. And over here, I'm going to want the uh, preparation time and the difficulty level and the cooking time and the number of servings. So just general information about it. So if I want to turn on the preview again, just to see what that might look like. Um, so this is here, it gives you um, sort of randomized values if you're looking at the, um, the default content because you don't have a particular piece of um, a particular recipe that you're looking at. So now that I have this here, I want my ingredients and the recipe down at the bottom under this. So I'm gonna add another section and this one's gonna be a two column. I'm gonna do this, uh, I think 2575. And now again, I wanna drag some of these fields and I'm gonna disable it. Uh, I wanna drag the ingredients field over on the left and I want to drag the instructions over on the right. And then at the top, I'm still gonna have the tags, recipe field. And here is moderation controls because Umami has uh, the content moderation um, module on by default. So you're gonna see that there'll be like a publish, unpublish um, Dropbox there or select box. So I'm gonna save this. And we're gonna look at a particular recipe and see that it now is, that's not a recipe. We're gonna look at a particular recipe and voila, I somehow messed up the CSS when I was doing the demo before. So, but you can imagine that I got this a bit wrong, but um, if I hadn't messed up the CSS, it'd be a little more spaced out. Um, but we put it into three columns, two columns, um, and so right now, basically, it's just moving around fields. Um, and the other thing that we can sort of notice here is that if you open this up and you um, say edit the tags field, say this is the same formatter you would you're sort of regular you're used to on managed display, but it's just opened up in a different space. So all of this, anything, any field formatter modules that you have, or anything that that hooks into the field system, uh, you'll get this as an option to say, you know, if you had a different type of formatter here. Any questions so far? Okay, can, so this is, can you, yep. Ted, can you click on configure, sorry, it's Jake, I just have my video yep. off, so yep. lovely, but can you click on configure section? Because I haven't yep. seen layout over there in a while, what does that do? Yep. So configure section lets you switch the, just lets you switch the widths. Um, if you have certain modules add functionality here to have their own settings, like one example I think is like layout builder styles uh, would let you choose different styles. Uh, say if you wanted to have like a bold, bold, uh, is this section or something like that? Or maybe you would have like, even like an image behind it or something. Um, but that would have to be added either through custom code or, uh, or a module. So. But each section has the ability to store extra third-party settings. Cool. Thanks. Uh, 
I have a question. Uh, well, Daniels, uh, when you're editing one of the uh, configuring one of the blocks, and you got yeah. the the uh, pop up on the uh, right, yeah. Uh, the that's a that's a block, and uh, what I've noticed, uh, I was moving a, what was a panel page on seven into mm -hmm. eight, mm -hmm. and in seven on blocks, uh, I could select some styles like outline in uh, a rounded corner box. Yeah, and I, I don't have that kind of facility here. It looks like I'd have to do a bunch of fancy stuff and diving into CSS to get something like that. Yeah, to get that, you would have to. You can use layout builder styles, but it's still going to let you choose styles that you have pre-made, um, and you have to provide the CSS for that. Um, I I I have actually don't know if any modules that'll give you that functionality out of the box. There may be some by now. Um, but the only ones I've seen are that allow you to sort of set up your own CSS to, um, it's hard to provide like a really generic one that works well across different themes, pre-made styles. But it also the other thing that could happen, uh, I'm not sure that um, any themes have done it, is themes potentially could add settings um, that would give them different, you know, built-in styles. And a separate question in that area, uh, I also had, uh, some links over there, and I wanted to put a new link in. And on most places, when I bring up the uh, link dialog, I can say uh, the uh, in a new tab rather mm -hmm. than in place. And I've had to go in and turn into uh, source code mode and type in the target equals blank in there. Like if you just want to add an arbitrary link? Right. Um, you could do that if you set up inline blocks to have a link field, but right now um, I don't have that set up in this one. But I, I can, I'm going to have an example of inline blocks later. Let's just use fields, and you could, you know, so if you wanted to add a block type that had a link, you could do that. Thank you. Yep. All right. And Ted, uh, uh, we had a yep. we had a question from somebody uh, who doesn't have a mic, I think. Um, sure. Ray asks, can you talk about Layout Builder, Display Suite? Uh, do they work together? And uh, if so, how? Um, I, I am not sure. One potential way they might work is Display Suite does a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, a lot of the stuff that it does is it adds extra option and field formatters, if I remember correctly. Um, so potentially, those could still work together. I think when Layout Builder first came um, out, uh, display Suite made some assumptions about uh, it being the managed display page in particular. So if you used formatters anywhere else, it wasn't working. But I haven't checked. Potentially, that would be a small issue to address, or they've already addressed it. Um, besides that, it's not going to the uh, the only sort of overlap would be that they both now use the layout API that Core provides. So if you made layouts for um, Display Suite, you would be able to use them in Layout Builder. So the layout sort of layouts in, in general is what you these are sort of layout plugins. So you could actually add more complex ones. I actually don't know where I got this one plus four grid. It was probably some module I enabled for the demo but I'm forgetting now. But if you made a display suite um, layout in Drupal 8 that was more complex, it would show up here. Ted, is there any yep. overhead using Layout Builder? Any server overhead or database overhead? Um, not if you're using caching, really, especially if you're not using overrides so much. With overrides, there's a little bit of overhead but um, what I'm showing now, where you're doing managed um, display, I mean, it is going to be, it's a little more complex render, but in Drupal, you're hardly ever, rend like, if you have something that potentially if you had a huge site and you weren't caching um, your content, your rendered content for some reason, then yeah, there'd be a little bit of overhead. But if you're, most sites are going to be caching all this regardless. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go on because probably a lot of stuff there'll be questions. I'll probably be covering it soon. Um, so this is just an example of like layout builder. You know, you build sections. So instead of if 
by default, the way it works is instead of having one complex layout, you have uh, a layout that you build from multiple sections. Core provides the one to four column sections that I showed. Um, section widths are configurable. Um, this allows creating complex layouts. So this is an example of the Radex layout module in Drupal 7. And you can see there's like tons of different layouts that it would come with. So in Drupal 7, often in panels and I think in this place, we, it was your, your layout for the whole thing, whether it was the page or, or like managed or say for, in this case, like a recipe, you do the whole, you select a layout for the whole thing where in layout builder, you stack sections. Um, so an example in Layout Builder is we can make all of these sections here, but we can't make some of the ones that are disappearing. So the example, in the, if you look at the top right, uh, we have the um, one with uh, the top right layout here. Sorry, dyslexic top left. Um, you have a column that goes all the way across multiple sections. Right now, Layout Builder can't do that. How you could do that in Layout Builder is you would just make that if you see one, two, three, four different uh, sections, if you made that one layout plugin, then you could do that in Layout Builder. You just can't stack it that way. Um, okay, so let's look at an example of Umami articles. So if we look at how Umami makes the display of articles, and this is not just the article, but this is the whole page that you're looking at, we have a bunch of fields that are displayed. And on the right, we have a view block and the view block is configured in the block uh, block layout page. So you make the view and then you place it in block layout. Um, and then if we look at the larger page down below, we have uh, more blocks down at the bottom. We have another view, and then we have two other view, two other blocks. One's a, I think it's a menu block, and one is just a custom block. So we can see here to get this page, um, we have multiple. Um, places we have to go we have to go to manage display we have to go to block layout we have to go to um uh we have to configure each block to show up where we want so we're going to see how in layout builder we can do some of this um without going to these places so we manage display block layout and then you would have block configuration this is without layout builder to say i only want this block to show up on articles um so let's do an example of how this would work. So let's look at articles. So right now, if we look at an article, actually, I have an article I want to use. And I'm using this article because it has related content to it, which will be sort of important. So right now, I've removed. I'm sorry, I've Ted, I have one yep. question. Uh, sure. In the chat room, uh, Chris Johnson has asked, do the column section stack on mobile by default? uh yeah let me show what it looks like okay so we'll move it over and you know it would go down like that i think that was a question that they're gonna it depends how you do the css if you use cores layouts yeah they do stack um but of course if you make your own layout plugins you have to make sure that they work that way cool People. thank you yep okay so okay so we're looking at an article and I've taken off the side, I haven't taken off the sidebar region and the theme, but I've removed everything that would show up there. And I've also removed stuff that's gonna show up in the footer, except for this uh, copyright and this thing here. Um, but if we look at the uh, umami out of the box, if we look at it here, there's gonna be stuff on the side and there's gonna be stuff on the bottom. So I want to show how you could make this all within Layout Builder. So I'm going to go to content types, and now we're dealing with articles. And again, usually um, turning it off he on here would be enough, but because Umami has, has overrides for full content, we have to turn it on here. And I am going to add, uh, allow each content to have its own layout customized just to save time because I wanna show later how that works. So I'm gonna turn this on. Again, I have managed display. So I want to, first of all, I want to kind of pretend, not pretend, but basically I want Layout Builder to have a sort of sidebar like the theme usually has. So I'm gonna add a section up here, have it be two column, and I'm gonna put a sidebar that is 25% width. 
And I'm gonna drag most of my stuff up here, I think. And again, let me just show this with the preview on. Um, I'm going to drag the image. I'm gonna drag the body. I'm gonna drag the links field, even though we probably don't have links and the moderation control, even though we aren't gonna deal with that right now. Um, and I'm gonna drag the body back underneath the image, I think. All right, so let's see here. So drag, let's drag the, the tags up to the top and the links aren't gonna show up anyway. So I'll just, for the sake of the demo, we'll use it. Oh, and I actually got the body out of the section here. Okay, so now I've taken everything out of my single column because I no longer want to use it and I'm gonna remove it. And now I have this empty side over here. So let's just save this and let's reload this. So right now, one problem with Layout Builder, and I think you could control this with um, CSS, is it keeps this empty thing here if there's nothing in it. Um, but what I want to do is I want related articles over here on the right. So I want this is going to be about, um, say, this article, this random article that it's using for the, for the managed defaults is has the tag of chocolate. So I want to show over here a list of other articles about chocolate. So I've pre-made a view that I call demo or articles aside related. So if you're familiar with views, views have has contextual filters and contextual filters, um, you can tell it uh, the thing that I'm expecting is say it's a node or it specifically maybe it's a node and it's an article. Um, so Layout Builder, if you use those, can tap into that and say, okay, tell me which node you're talking about. So right now, um, there is only one node that it knows about, and the node is the um, is the piece of is the article that we're going to be looking at. So I'll show the view in a second, but basically this these course this corresponds to a contextual filter on the view. So I am going to not display the title of the view, maybe. Maybe I'll do it. Um, so right here, it has a placeholder because when you're doing um, the layout for defaults, it really doesn't know an, it doesn't know the specific article that we're looking at. So it just has a placeholder for views that require a contextual filter. But let's save this. And let's reload our oatmeal article. And we can see our oatmeal article has four tags, five vegan, vegetarian, oats, breakfast, and dessert. So presumably, and obviously I don't know why, I think dessert was just for my example. Presumably all of the articles here somehow relate or relate to one of those terms. So I'm gonna click this article and it's like, oh yeah, it's about vegan, it's also has the vegan tag. And if we look back at our oatmeal one, it has the vegan tag. Um, so I'm gonna quick just show part of that view as to how how it relates to what we're doing in, in Layout Builder. So related. So if I edit this view, the kind of thing that, that got that drop down there was this contextual filter content ID. And to make it work with Layout Builder, I have to set this validator to content. So basically, if Layout Builder knows what, if views can tell Layout Builder, hey, this is a piece of content that I'm expecting, then Layout Builder would say, okay, I know I have the context of a piece of content, so I'm gonna let you select it. Um, so in this case, I'm saying hide view if you don't have the, the uh, contextual filter uh, value. So basically, if you have these, it'll show up in um, in Layout Builder as an option. But the, the other thing to notice here is that it, the view was also filtering on tags related to the um, tags that the article also has. So in my oatmeal has these tags, I only want to show articles that have at least one of those tags. So when we're looking at the article, it's harder to get the, the context of these tags. 
But luckily, views blocks have this built-in ability to grab the context from the URL. So instead of doing the sort of validation and telling, I am using the validation, but the layout builder doesn't know of any particular term ID, but it can grab the term ID from the URL. And views has this option, this is not new with layout builder to say, load the default filter from the node page. This is good for related taxonomy blocks. So basically what I'm saying is, look at the node of this page and then filter by those taxonomy term IDs. The one thing I didn't show with the content ID, the reason I want that filter there, I forgot to mention, is I'm actually excluding it because when we're looking at the oatmeal article, I don't want the oatmeal article itself to show up in the right. So I want all articles that are related, or the first four in this case, except the article itself. Any questions on that? Um, I would just say, like, if you know, if you find Layout Builder interesting to use, it definitely makes um, the importance of learning views and sort of the advanced stuff of views. Uh, more important. If you are familiar with panels from Drupal 7 or probably for Drupal 8 too, it uses a lot of the, the same context system. So if you know it for, for panels, it's not too hard to learn it for Layout Builder because it's more just a matter of le learning the views, um, site building skills, not necessarily just Layout Builder. Questions? Okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go back to my slides. Um, so my point here is, oh, wait, uh, there's a couple other things I wanted to do there. The other thing I wanted to do is in this article, maybe we had articles, yeah. I wanna add the stuff at the bottom because I've taken a lot of stuff out of the bottom of, so out of the regions of the theme and I wanna replace it by stuff in layout order. So I'm gonna add another one column and I'm gonna add a block here that if we look at um, the default in my profile has this recipes collection. So I wanna add that also. Uh, recipes, oh my gosh, we thought we fixed that. Uh, so we have this list view recipes collection and six has, you see this one has no contextual filter here. So there's not a drop down. The only drop down is how many items want to show. Um, don't know well, why that's not showing up. Let's save the layout and see if it shows up. Ah, I don't know why, what happened there. Um, so we have the recipe collection here, and then I'm gonna add a new section that's a two column where we're gonna have our contact form or our contact block, menu block. Uh, contact. No, it's called footer, uh, footer menu. And I'm gonna change this to contact us. And then over here, I'm gonna add a block and this block is the, what's it called? Uh, it's a food magazine banner or something or other. Banner, let's say it's that. That's not it. But you get the idea that you could add a custom block here. That's not the one I wanted. Actually, it was your mommy. I'm going to, if I don't get this on the next try, I'm going to skip it because the point is you can add custom blocks. <laughs> not the particular, uh, this, you know, if, mommy footer promo, probably that one. I'm not going to split the title. Yay, I got the right one. Okay, so if we save this and we look back at our oatmeal article now, we have the related articles. And then at the bottom, we have a recipe collections, a food magazine. So of course, you'd probably want to theme this a little bit better. Um, but you can see how this in without layout builder, this is actually stuff that's coming from block layout. You'd also probably want to change it so that layout builder takes up more of your page so that you wouldn't have these sort of sidebars that are built into your theme. So potentially if you want to use layout builder, you want to sort of go all in, you can adapt your theme to sort of take away some of the regions so that um, the thing that's being 
displayed here, which usually we think of, we go, okay, this is just the article, and then we have regions on the right. You could think of the article as taking over more of the page and having the view, related views and different blocks be sort of controlled from one place. Uh, so the point of that is that, you know, with Layout Builder, without Layout Builder, we have multiple administration pages, multiple user permissions, and we have to deal with visibility conditions to keep blocks on showing up for articles, but not other pages. Where with Layout Builder, you know, one administration page, the layout for the articles, one permission, the ability um, to administer uh, the layout for that content type, and you, you don't have to worry about visibility conditions. And so right now you actually can't have visibility conditions. So maybe you would say in the future, we might want to say, we'll show this on articles that have a value in a particular field. So potentially um, once we add visibility conditions, you could do stuff like that, which you could do with panels in Drupal 7, but right now it's not supported. Any questions or time check? Uh, Ted, you can uh, you can take as much time as you want because we had our uh, our second uh, presenter drop out, so we've got we've got extra time available. Okay, cool. Well, just let me know when I get when I people get bored. Um, okay, so <laughs> hey, Carlos, Carter, I have a quick question. Quick question. Um, um, how does it play with paragraphs? Do you have to change it to something else? To uh, make it work? Make it work. I. I'm hearing it. Uh, I'm hearing the question with a lot of distortion. I don't know if it was just me or other people. Maybe you could type it. Sure. I, sure. I, I heard it. It was it was about using paragraphs okay. and layouts. Can you hear me? Okay, Ted. And, yeah. and Carlos, yeah. you should re you should type it anyway. I'm just trying to help. Yeah. So I guess generally, like, how do they play together? So in a sense, if you think of like paragraphs as just individual uh, as field values, then you can place the paragraph field within layout builder. What you can't do right now, there's there's a module called I think paragraph blocks or something that will turn each of your individual paragraphs into a block that you can place. Then if you did that, you could actually like move the individual blocks in different places. But without that module, you can't. Um, the Layout Builder has the idea of inline blocks. And once we get to landing pages, it's kind of like an alternative to um, paragraphs. And it has some advantages over paragraphs. It has some disadvantages, just depending on your use case. Um, it has some has some major performance um, uh, uh, improvements uh, because of the way paragraphs work, which I'll talk about uh, when we get to that part. Um, I didn't, I'm not looking at the chat. So if anybody sees his question and I didn't answer it, uh, we can repeat it. Okay. That was it. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Cool. Uh, all right. So look at layout overrides. So layout overrides is basically we made a say we made a layout for recipe for all the recipes, but we want this one recipe to have a, its own layout. Um, it's only available for the default view mode. I, you can't say, well, I want this. Uh, recipes teaser to have a different layout than other uh, teasers. So I, actually, one thing I forgot to mention is that all view modes can use Layout Builder. So if you want to use Layout Builder for the teaser view mode, you can do that. You just can't have a customized teaser for one particular node or other entity. Um, and they start from the bundle defaults, but they're not synced. So the idea is it would start in, in our case of recipes that will start how all recipes look, but then you customize. But if you change all, if you change the default for recipes, your one recipe that has an override is not going to sync with it. Um, the only thing you can, get, do, you can do to get back for that, if you want, you can discard your override, then you're back to whatever the current default is. But hopefully I'll be more clear when we look at it. Um, how it's stored underneath is stored as a field. Um, you can't delete this field if you have Layout Builder on, at least not through the UI. Um, it's not deployed through configuration management. So it's a field value. So any field value that have you have on a particular entity, say a node, is not deployed via configuration management. There are um, various entity staging modules that you could use that would, would 
work with Layout Builder just because they work with fields. Um, the other advantages of it being a field is that it works with content moderation. So we can have uh, and revision. So the idea that you could have a draft of a layout for a particular node if you want to run it through some process where people have to improve it. Um, uh, we'll get back to that. So, okay, we're going to do a simple recipe override change. We want a bigger image on one particular recipe. So let's take a look at, um, let's look at our recipes and let's say we have this brownie recipe and maybe this picture is so awesome that we want it to be larger just for this particular recipe. Um, we don't want to make any template changes, but we want this to take up the full width of this area. And then we want the stuff over here to be underneath it. So, so right now I don't have the option to do that because there's no layout tab here. But if I go back to content types, recipe, go back to manage display, and I go to my, ooh, yes. So my slides are wrong because if you're using the full content, full content template, um, like Umami is, um, then you have to enable it here. So if we let's look back and just I'm going to try to explain what's going on here. A lot of times on a lot of sites you don't have this checked. You're just default and full content basically is the same thing. When you go to a page, you're seeing the default view. But you can override that to say, okay, I want my full content to have a different view. Like this has sort of caused a lot of problems with Drupal and a lot of confusion. I don't think if we were to do it again this way, we'd have this behavior. But if you've if you've checked this, then if you want to override a particular recipe, you have to go here. So I'm going to allow each content item um, to have its layout customized. Hit save. And I'm going to look back at my brownies. So they're the same, but I do have a layout tab here. So if I click this, it gives you a message. And what it's trying to tell me is, uh, no, this is the message I'm looking at. I'm editing the layout for this particular content item. If I wanted to lay out, edit the template for all recipes, I would click here, but I want to do it for this one. Uh, and let's just use content moderation just to sort of show how that works. I'm gonna say, I want this to be a draft. So I don't want this change to go out live right away. And I want to move this image up here so it can be full width. I'm gonna drag it here. Bam, it gets bigger because, well, let's make it be down here. Uh, it gets bigger because it's a, what do you call it? It's a, not dynamic. Uh, it's a image that expands. Um, somebody probably knows this answer better than me. Um, so we have the bigger image here. So that is great um, now, but of course now, this doesn't make sense to have this empty thing here. So I'm going to add another section that's a two column. I'm just going to make it a 50-50. And I'm just going to drag these here. Drag that one there, drag these there. So instead of having the image on one side and then uh, two columns, two more columns of information, I just have the image up here, two columns of information. So I'm not using this anymore. So let me delete this. Uh, let's save the layout. And now the latest version of this particular recipe has the bigger image. But if I was to look at this, um, the view, so if I was not signed in right now, this is what I would see. So maybe I have to show my editor and maybe the editor has the ability to change this field and they say, oh yeah, this looks really good. I love this big picture of brownies. Um, so we're going to save this to published. And now when we view the node, our big brownie picture is here. And if we look at a, another recipe, magically, it will not have the big image because this only applies to this individual node. Anybody questions on that? Um, okay, so let's go and see this. So this is a very simple sort of override, not involving like any new content or anything like that, but just 
a small field formatter change. Um, so let's look at custom blocks. So this is where we kind of get into a similar area to uh, paragraphs. Uh, custom inline blocks. So you'll see sometimes it's, uh, and I am probably to blame for some of the naming uh, unclearness in this, but sometimes you'll see it referred to as inline blocks in the code, uh, custom blocks through the UI. Um, so this allows you to create custom blocks inside Layout Builder. Um, so these are the same block types as your block library. So this is not a new entity type. So if you have, um, I think Drupal core comes with like the basic block out of the box and you can add new block types. If you add new block types, they will be available to add in um, inside Layout Builder. Um, if you add a block inside Layout Builder, it will not be available in your custom block library. Um, and part of the reason for that is that you may have a draft of a particular piece of content where you added the inline block. So we control the access to the inline block from the access to the thing that you're adding it to. So if you have, say, a custom module or some other module like content access, I'm not sure if that's in Drupal 8 yet, um, where you control access to a particular node or some other entity, your access to the inline blocks will be um, controlled by that. So uh, we did that because people might not understand when they're adding stuff to a display, they might think, well, this is a protected node, so I can, whatever I add will be protected. Um, so that's the functionality. Um, so the, our example is we're gonna add a recipe to an article. Um, so reference to a recipe. So the idea is we have this article, um, it re yeah, it's gonna, it relates to a particular article and we wanna promote it there. And we could add an entity reference field, but the client wants it yesterday. So there's no time to go and ask a site builder to add a new field to have an entity reference from articles to recipes. So let's see how we would do that. So if we go back to articles and let's say it's this one here. And we have our related articles here but I also want to just take some arbitrary recipe and I want to put it up here. So I've already turned on uh, layout overrides for articles. So I'm going to click this. And here, instead of like moving fields around or changing the formatter, we want to actually add a new block. So I'm going to add a block. And I've created a bunch of block types that will show up when I click Create Custom Blocks. So I'm just going to demonstrate that if I were to go to the block layout, and go to my block library and i went to add a block this here is the same list so this is existing drupal functionality we're just giving you the ability to add these blocks here so what i'm going to add is i added a content picker block so this is just a block type with one entity reference field so actually this is the title i'm going to say check out this recipe Two. And then I'm going to pick some recipes. So I know I have a recipe about brownies. I thought I did. Mm, chocolate. Okay. So I have a recipe. I have a recipe called vegan chocolate nut brownies, I think. So I'm just going to select that. I'm going to add it. And now I want to drag that up here. And now for this particular article, I have a, a sort of display of this recipe. So let's save this. And so voila, I have this extra recipe over here on the right. The other thing that's nice about this is if I go back to layout and I, actually maybe I want this recipe show up somewhat differently, I can edit this block and I can change the view mode. So block, Block types are an entity type that support view mode. So I'm going to change this view mode to call it card alt. And it changes how it, same recipe just changes how it looks. And you can actually use Layout Builder to change, to override these particular view modes. Because Layout Builder can, anywhere you have managed display, Layout Builder can take over that. So if I wanted to use Layout Builder in a nested way here, I could create multiple view modes for blocks and each one have a different layout. Any questions? Let's save that and see how that works.
Can, yada, yada, yada. Ted, yeah. Ted yeah. That, that list, the list of blocks that you're adding to a layout, um, yeah. can you can you control it? You can get in there and say these only these block types are available to layouts. Even um, if it's in custom code. Yes, in custom code, in. there is this new hook we have where it's basically, and it's actually not limited to layout folder, but anytime you're presenting, anytime you're, uh, basically anytime you have section plugins or, or these block plugins um, that you can filter out the ones you want. There's a module called layout folder restrictions, which wraps a UI around this that lets you say, okay, only certain people can add this type of section only i think it's i don't know actually i'm not sure if it's by role or if it's by like content type um okay. but you could you could restrict types of sections and types of blocks cool thank you yeah okay so let's look at the next example so of inline block usage let's say i just want to promote a viral video on a particular recipe so we have a recipe it went viral there's no video field or media field on the recipe content type, and people will be bored with the video in two days, so we want it up there now. So if we go back to look at a recipe, let's look at this brownie recipe. And maybe we have, maybe in fact, like we don't even want this picture anymore. Maybe we want this new great video here instead of the picture. So I'm gonna go to layout. I am going to remove this block and I'm going to add a new block and I'm going to create a custom block. And one of the blocks that I made was a media picker block. And this is uh, just viral video. I'm not going to show this. Um, and I'm using the media library, which is now stable in Drupal core, where I'm going to add media here. And I'm going to do a remote video so I could choose from videos that I have already, Connor Reeves video, or I could grab a URL. So I'm actually gonna add this one again, just to show how, show how it is, how it works. So I have this YouTube video here. I'm gonna add it. So now if I had extra fields on this library, on the, on, on the media type, I could fill it out here. I'm going to save. Uh, so now I have this in my library. It's the same one I had before, but it's it's checked there. Um, so I'm going to insert selected, and I'm going to add the block. So now mm, it doesn't come up full width. So if I was going to do this, one thing I'd probably want to do is I'd probably want to configure this block to have different view modes, where in one view mode the uh, the video was larger. Um, I think in def by default with the remote video in Drupal core is you don't have multiple formatters, if I remember correctly. Um, so I guess that makes it less impressive, but <laughs> you can imagine if I had the video larger, it would be more impressive. Um, so this is an example of just, I want to replace this one uh, video, this one recipe to add a video instead of an image, but I don't have my site sort of built to do that right now. I could have also left the image there and add the video, say maybe after the instructions or something like that. Any questions on that? Uh, do, 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 do. USB, layout builder, landing pages. Okay, so landing pages, they're really just overrides. So um, how I make them, we're gonna look at creating the Yamami homepage. Uh, so they have a little video of their Yamami homepage because it's really complex what's going on here. We have a custom block of the type at the top. Then we have a view block. And then over here in the same block is a view attachment. So that's one view block. Then we have page title block. And then we have another view page, we have a view that's at slash node, which is what our homepage is. At the bottom, we have a view block. And then we have those other blocks that we added when we did articles. So if you look at the homepage of Umami, like what's going on is kind of super complicated and it's, you know, it's from a lot of different places. What you're actually looking at is you're looking at slash node and there's a view at slash node 
which is right here, but it's kind of difficult to tell, to know like, is this the view we're looking at or is this the view down here? Um, so a proposed way you can use Layout Builder is you can make a content type, oh, that's wrong site. You can make a content type and I made it, I pre-made it here, it's a landing page content type. And if you look at the fields, it has no fields that you can, that I added, it has a Layout Builder field because if I look at Manage Display, I have Use Layout Builder and allow each content to have its own layout. Um, so uh, what I did is I would just add a landing page. My landing page is going to have no content. We'll just say Home Page Test. And it's kind of clunky right now because you have to basically add it and add layout go to layout and then you can start to add things. So if I wanted to add, I think I have a banner that is on the home page. Add that. I probably wouldn't want the title, but let's just um, not worry about that now. And then I'm going to add the two column here. So I have a, I'm going to add a sort of a big recipe here, then two smaller recipes there. So I'm going to add a view. I think I have a demo view for this. Promoted item single, then promoted two. So I made two view blocks, I think, out of the same view, where one, I'm going to show one view, one, um, uh, I guess, article, not, not, um, not recipe. And then over here, I'm going to have another view where I'm doing the promoted the second two promoted articles on the page. And what I actually do is I say, take in views, you can do an offset. So basically I'm listing promoted articles in both of these views, but in the second view over here to the right, I start with the second promoted article instead of the first one. So I don't duplicate here. So I made two view blocks, I think in the same view. So I have this, obviously I'd want to format this better or use a different view mode in my view probably. Um, if I look back at the home page, we have our title here. So um, what I could do is I could just grab this text. Oops. And I could add a full width column here. And then I can add a block. And in this case, if I wanted to, I could create a custom block and do the basic block that just comes with Drupal core. And I don't want to. And then I oh, was my title. I guess my title was just home. Probably could have typed that out without copying it. Um, so I'm just going to add this block. So we have the, sort of the same uh, idea here. It's like we probably want to format our block titles in a way that they actually are centered. Then if we look at the home page below that, we have a bunch of recipes, which I think I also pre-made. So under there, maybe that's it. I have a feeling it's not, it's not. Um, I guess the point is here, if I had a view of just recipes, then I could add it and we would get the same thing here. Like four, we could do a, a view of four in a grid or something like that. Or we could have individual columns where we just add individual recipes via the content picker block that I made. Um, and in the bottom, we could add the same thing we did before. We could add the recipe collection block down here. Where is that? Recipe collection. For some reason, that doesn't show up the first time. And there it is. And then we could do the same thing we did, I think, on articles where we just had a 50-50 or something where we're adding the menu on one side. Footer, menu, menu, footer. Let's just leave it as footer. And then we're adding some sort of banner. No, something else called the footer block, which is a custom block. And I'm not, 
So here we would have that. So this, I save the layout. So in this case, my layout in a sense is my content um, in the way that some people are using layout builder. So in, in, in a sense, it's similar to, um, it's similar to paragraphs because not only can I add um, individual um, things that are art, like views that are already made, I could also go in and I could add media or I could add any, I could make my, block types in the way that I used to make my paragraph types. Um, and then I can add, uh, I could add custom blocks in line to these landing pages. Any question on that? So let's go to questions. I feel like I wanna leave time for other people. I have, there's, if you wanna look at the sort of larger um, there is a larger um, presentation on this uh, from DrupalCon. Um, if there's anything people want me to delve into now, I can. Um, I, I, Ted, I mean, I have some questions. I, I have, what, what's the status of some of the, what are, like, what are some of the limitations? or the status of some of the challenges in a face layout builder. The one that comes to mind is multilingual as a big yeah. one. Like for me, it's a big one. Yeah, so for multilingual, there's a couple options. So right now, so layout builder will work with multilingual sites in the sense that if you use it to show fields, if you use it to show views, um, and those things are translated, it will show you the right version of those things. So if you, have, you can translate a view, you put a view on a page somewhere via, via Layout Builder, it will show the right version. It will show the right version of field things. But what you can't do is you can't have custom overrides per language. Um, but there is a module. There's two modules for that. Um, uh, go back. I think I've listed in the section before. When you say custom overrides for language, you're talking kind of like panels had contextual filters that... If you're on app, if you're on one language, it'll show you certain blocks. If you're on another language, it'll show you different blocks. Yeah, something like that. So okay. there are label to translations. Hmm. There's two modules. Uh, I'm sorry for the naming, but one is called Layout Builder uh, Symmetric Translations, and I made that one. Layout Builder Symmetric Translations. Um, and the, the, the idea here is that this is a case where you want all of your versions of a node to have different, say, inline content, different maybe if you want to add inline blocks. You add a video block, you want to be able to translate it, or if you add a, like a basic block with text, you want to translate it, but you don't want anything in different positions and you don't want any uh, different layouts per language. And the advantage of that is, say, is if you have five languages and you want the same layout, but you just want translated content, it's really hard to do because every time, if if you use the other module that I'm gonna show, um, if you use that module and you wanted to keep things in sync, you have to manually go to each layout and keep it in sync. Um, so layout builder asymmetric translations, uh, what it does is each, um, each language of a particular override would have a totally different layout. Um, so no connection as far as like, if you add a new block in one in the default language, it will not show up in any of the other ones. Um, if you if you change the, say the field formatter in one language, it won't go to the other one. So in that case, it's probably better for like localizations where maybe you're making a landing page and really like the French landing page should be different than the English landing page. Maybe it's more because it's for France versus the US. Um, the one that I made is probably better if you want all of your languages to have the same look, it's just you want the content translated. So honestly, this one is what we're talking about getting in core because basically if you have the asymmetric where each layout is different, it's really hard to do, it's really hard to make that work with the, the use case where you want all of your layouts to be the same. Um, so, I mean, there's a possibility we could get both in core. It's just like, 
each one has its own difficulties and the user experience of explaining when we're using one and when you're using the other is really difficult. So probably one method will be in core first and then we'll either add the second one or the second method will stay in contrib. All right, thanks. So in the situation where the translations lag a little bit, like maybe the English goes up one day and the, trans the another language is three days later, there's no way to in the symmetric translations to hold to have that work. Yeah, there's not really a way to do that. It would show you like if you added a node, but you didn't add the Spanish version. It's just kind of like if it was a regular node without layout builder, you would see the English version until you had the Spanish version added. I guess where you would sort of could solve that problem is if how you get to a particular node is because they're in, in a view, uh, particularly the you know, and then you link from that view to the individual page. If the person say is looking at the Spanish version of the site, the, Span the Spanish version of, of the view should not be showing um, any nodes that aren't translated into English, sorry, aren't tra in, translated into Spanish. So you wouldn't get to the page anyways, but it depends on your use case. Any other questions? So, yeah, if you compare this to paragraphs, uh, yes. what do you recommend like for building a website from scratch? Um, so, I mean, the, the paragraphs uh, from scratch, uh, I don't know, like if you're using it, I think paragraphs is usually not, so Layout Builder does a couple things. It, it replaces managed display, and then it lets you do customization, customize, customizing for those templates that, so overriding a particular node, and then it does landing pages. But when I showed landing pages, it's really just using the overrides in a particular way. Um, and I think the over the landing pages override case is really like the place where there's a lot of overlap with paragraphs. So if you need the, my understanding, if you need the default sort of layout just, uh, and you wanna replace managed display, that's, that's layout builder for sure. Uh, as far as I know, paragraphs doesn't do that use case. It's, it's not meant to do that use case. If you're building landing pages, um, w one problem with paragraphs, and it, they may have solved it, is scale. So the way that paragraphs works is it uses this model called module called entity re reference revisions. So every time you make a uh, change to a uh, paragraph, it stores a new revision and it stores a new revision of the parent. So I know at Acquia, they have some sites that are some really big sites that have used paragraphs that it becomes really, after a while and you have tons of content, that table gets just like, gets huge. Like, I think, I wanna say like gigabytes huge if, if, you, if you aren't careful. And that is like, just like a huge site. Right, so not you're not likely to hit that, but you still could could hit problems like that. The other problem is if you have really complex nested paragraphs, then saving the whole page becomes a really big operation. Whereas with Layout Builder, if, if you make it a page with Layout Builder, um, and you're saving and you're editing it and you're saving inline blocks, it only ever saves the one you edit on a particular page. And my understanding how Paragraphs at least used to work is when you save it, it saves a uh, complete new revision of all the paragraph entities on the page. So that that sometimes can have problems with the saving operation. I don't know if anybody's hit that yet, or it may be just like not, not a problem in most cases, but in some cases when you get really complex pages built with paragraphs. Um, let's see. I know people use paragraphs for for layouts. Uh, it's, I think in some sense, it's a matter of like which user experience you like better. Um, whereas my understanding is paragraphs that you're on the edit page, which I think also has some advantages. Um, and layout builder, you're, you're on a separate tab, um, which 
could have some advantages if you want to sort of have people separate out they're thinking of like certain things are editable like metadata for a page and, and other things for layout um so yeah i don't I know mean, i don't know i guess it's i'm not going to say don't use paragraphs but um it definitely like it has obviously a, a big ecosystem around it and, and it works really well in a lot of cases so i'm probably don't know as much about paragraph just to say like don't use it in X, X case, except for the things I think it doesn't do at all as far as like replace managed display. Thank you. Yep. All right, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna step in and and yep. uh, and and call it. I know that we have a lightning talk, um, and then. I think that JD was volunteering after the lightning talk to uh, go through a quick um, hands-on demo of Lando. Um, I think Daryl, you're the one that has that lightning talk all prepped, ready to go. Well, first of all, thank you very much, Ted, for, for talking. Yeah, thanks, y'all. Thanks a lot. Yay. <clears throat> awesome. Who can make the ladder clap? <laughs> um, but uh, with that, Daryl, do you think that you're ready to step in? Sure, sure. Uh, All right, go for it, Daryl. Daryl, step light, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Um, all right, let me uh, switch here. That's cool. Uh, so this should be uh, short and brief. Um, this presentation is just installing some type of third party library uh, inside of the Drupal 8 project. For this example, I'm using um, a JavaScript library from Arm Treasure. Um, I had to use it for a project at work. I was going to do this anyway, but I had to do it a different way. So, going to use Composer. <clears throat> Composer is just really doing the heavy lifting. I will show an example of my uh, Composer.json file. And that's pretty much the next slide, just showing the important parts and just sort of walking through what each section kind of does, but it'll be super quick. So- uh, Daryl, like, will you share the screen with us? I don't- Oh, you're not seeing the screen? Exactly. Oh, about a percent. Are you seeing it now? No. Oh. There's a present now button at the bottom. Yeah, I'm hitting the percent button. That's odd. Did you oh. see a pop? I need to hit percent button on the actual meet. <laughs> I was going in Google. Okay. One second. Okay, now everyone should be able to see me, correct? Yep, thank you. Yep, All right, thank you. <laughs> so that's a goof on my part. Um, so yeah, uh, just describe this. Sorry, we over, over this slide. There we go in percent mode. There we go. So everyone can still see pretty well. Excellent. Okay, so Composer just does the heavy lifting as far as installing different type of libraries. You could install modules, you can install, um, in this particular case, a library. So, uh, let me go back. That's what I'm making do. So here you see me with my composer.json file. I'm running composer install. Right now, there's only composer.json. Boom. OK. So right now, you're seeing that there's something now inside the library's directory. Inside that is the actual dependency 
that I installed. And there was a Fender's directory, of course. So this is my essential composer.json file because all the non-essential, since that's a hot keyword at the moment, um, stuff more or less got removed um, just for the sake of this presentation. So the essential lines that I am identifying um, are the ones listed here. So repositories, in a composer file, um, for those who don't know, most of us probably do by now, um, you can kind of identify um, where you want to pull your library from. So line 13, um, that is you know, pretty much the naming convention that's on GitHub. So this is a treasure data repository uh, or package, and it's their um, treasure data JavaScript SDK repository that I'm implementing in this dummy site, inside this dummy module. Line 24 is what's the second because um, I just think it's that important. So line 24 basically is something that you need to install to um, install some of these other things that are in like line 18. Yeah, that's in like line 18. So you need to um, have this composer installer installed so you can install um, this Drupal library type. And what Drupal library type does is when you run composer install, it will say, um, it's, it's kind of telling composer that what you're installing is for a Drupal library. There's a whole bunch of different types of installers, not just for Drupal, but for different types of frameworks um, that's listed on the link I provided at the bottom, the packages link. And um, so what this tells Composer to do is to create a library's directory. And then now we'll jump to line 20 go to this URL and then line 21, <clears throat> um, treat it as a zip file, download it, unzip it, and then put it inside of your library's directory. Hopefully uh, that all makes sense, but um, if not, I'll be happy to uh, answer questions, which is the slide right here. So that's pretty much everything um, in action. It's it's just that simple. But if you don't know, you don't know. Um, just using Composer to um, you know point out. I'll just go back to this slide again. Point to a um, um, file you want a file you want to download. Um, it downloads it for you. You're identifying the type in uh, line 18, and once again. <clears throat> with line 15, you're saying this is a package which allows you to kind of do, um, if you go on the Composer website, say like uh, a do a inline composer.json file inside of your composer.json file. So this is why you might see something repeated like name, um, basically everything that's above line 13 or line 12, you kind of have in the same section um, between lines 13 and 22. So that is my presentation. Any All right. Anyone have any quick questions? Comments, concerns, jokes, poems? I, I, yeah, I think it's a great presentation. I think that's like, Everyone needs to be using Composer. I think that's important to start off any Composer-based presentation is just to be like, these are pat that's the right pattern to get any external library, and then you can extend that to get any external. Like if you want to use an experimental module, that's a similar pattern to calling. You, you have to call the Git repository to download an experimental module into your site because it's not on Composer. It's not in the Drupal Composer repo. Um, I made a note that like in D8, 
8.8 is now shipping with a composer template, which includes this pattern, which is great. That's it. Yeah, I agree. I also mentioned uh, just last night I was working on, I needed to apply two patches, uh, one patch applied to core, one patch applied to a contrib module. Um, there's a great little composer plugin out there to be able to apply patches uh, to any of the packages that, and, that you've required in your composer. Um, and it's made my life a lot easier because we were always uh, applying those patches after any upgrade, you know, every time. And now it's just part of composer. Um, So the last thing I'll say um, is I'll probably I'll probably be doing less presentations this year, and the only reason for that is um, I want to use as much free time as possible to become a Drupal Grandmaster, and um, it's going to take a lot of studying, I think, in my free time. So um, yep. if there's anyone who wants to help me accomplish that goal, um, I'm more than Welcome to the uh, ears. Good luck, Daryl. Yeah. yeah, good luck. All right, thank you very yeah. much, Daryl, for the, the lightning talk. Thank dog. you. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That's All a perfect right. lightning talk. Definition of a lightning talk. Now, so, yeah, absolutely. For those of you who haven't witnessed a lightning talk before, that's how they're done. So anybody who's got an, a good idea like that, nice and quick, and gets you know gets to a really important point or or something really interesting. That's perfect. Awesome. Um, I think JD was gonna jump in with some. Uh, uh, baby, baby. JD, JD and Ramona. There's Ramona. Say hi, Ramona. Hello, Hello. 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 All right, so Ramona is going to go ahead and do do something for us. This is Ramona's first uh, presentation, so we've got less than 10 minutes, so I'm going to just dive in uh, and talk a little bit about Lando. Um, so for those of you who don't know what Lando is, uh, Lando is a local development environment. Um, so a local development environment is uh, basically means you've got like a web server set up on your computer um, locally, not out on the internet. Um, so that you can develop uh, websites locally. And the reason, big reason you'd want to do that is it's a best practice. Um, when you're developing the website on your computer, uh, it means that you're able to kind of follow the best practices. And then when it comes time to deploy that website out to the internet, um, you can you know, deploy that up to a, a development environment and then a staging environment and then a production environment. <clears throat> Um, and that's kind of what we should all be aspiring to do. I know in reality, it's maybe not what we all do, um, but there's some good reasons for doing that. And that's beyond the scope of, of this very quick talk that I have not prepared at all. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, how many people uh, by a, a show of hands, no, by a show of, of yelling have actually installed Lando, um, have Lando installed uh, right now? Is there anybody? Yay, woo! I've got one. Me too. Well, two. We got two. Two people. Okay. Well, then uh, I'm not going to expect you to follow along. <laughs> we'll switch it up a little bit, but um, I will just show you how easy it is to set up a local development environment um, so that if you don't already have one set up or you don't have Lando set up and you want to consider using it, um, maybe you feel a little more confident to do so. Um, so I will share my screen here. Oh, let's see. It's not going to work. Ooh, I've got two screens. Let's share this one. OK. Where are we? OK, so um, I have installed Lando. So I followed that link that I uh, put in the chat, um, downloaded the DMG file, because I'm a Mac user, uh, installed it, and now I'm, I'm ready to go. Um, and so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new directory. Um, you can put this anywhere. Uh, on Macs, there's by default a sites directory. Um, so that's a good place to start. That little tilde just means uh, my home directory. So my username on this computer is JD. So that's uh, home JD. And then sites. And then I'm going to say Drupal Camp NYC. <laughs> Uh-oh, that exists. What have I done? All right. <laughs> We're going to Drupal Camp NYC 2. How about that? Um, OK, so I made that directory. And then I'm going to change into that directory.
There I am. All right, I'm going to go to my cheat sheet here. And I am going to clone using Git. Um, so Git is a version control system. And this basically just copies down all of the code from the Drupal Camp website, which is hosted on GitHub. Um, so using this command. Um, so that's cloning this uh, out from github.com down locally into this folder I just created. So it just did its thing. And then I'm going to check out a specific uh, Git branch here called Drupal Europe, which I'll explain why in a moment. OK, so that just means that now in my directory, I have the contents of this Git branch called Drupal Europe, um, which is different than the default branch, which is master. Uh, and I've got this branch called Drupal Europe because we're currently in the progress of uh, trying to leverage the code base of Drupal Europe uh, org. Let me find my uh, correct browser window here. So our current uh, DrupalCamp.nyc website looks kind of like this. Um, and that works. But some folks have done a lot, a lot, a lot of work building Drupal Camp websites. And here's Drupal Europe's <laughs> website. Uh, very impressive. They've got a lot going on. And they've got a lot of cool functionality um, that we're hoping to use for Drupal Camp NYC 2020. Um, so just as an example, we'll go to like all sessions and they've got, you know, these different tracks and they've got, you know, these cool little blurbs and anyway, there's a lot going on here. So that's what we're doing. And so we're going to go back to the terminal here. So I'm in the Drupal Europe branch. And now because I've installed Lando, I have the Lando command available. And I'm just going to say Lando init, which means initialize. Um, and it's asking where should I get my app's code base from? And I'm already in the directory, so I'm going to say current working directory. Although it should be noted that you could choose GitHub or Pantheon, um, both of which we're using for this project, uh, to set that up kind of a little differently. But I'm just going to do current working directory to keep things simple. And then it says what recipe do you want to use? So Lando has different recipes, which are just different configurations set up for different apps. And this is a Drupal 8 site, so I'm going to select Drupal 8. You can see there's some other options there as well. Uh, and this just gets the local development environment set up in a kind of optimized way um, for that app. So for Drupal 8, here we go. And it says, where is your web route relative to the init destination? So the arguably the best practice in Drupal uh, is that you want to have your Drupal code base uh, in a subdirectory of your uh, Git repository route. Um, for security reasons and just general for maintainability. And so we have that in the web directory, which you can see in the Git repository, which I'll send out later. And it says, well, you want to call this app. I'm just going to call it Drupal Camp NYC 2. OK, so now the app has been initialized. And so basically, all that has done is that has created a file called .lando.yaml. <coughs> And so here's the contents of the file. And basically, all it says is here's the name of the site, Drupal Camp NYC 2. Uh, recipe is Drupal 8. Uh, we chose Drupal 8 as the framework. Uh, and then it's got some different configuration options. Um, and actually, I realize this, we've actually overwritten, I forgot. <laughs> this Git repository already had this Lando file in it. So we actually overwrote this. So this might not work. <laughs> uh, perils of unprepared live demos, but um, we'll try it. So basically, what this does is it, it set up this configuration file for Lando. You can probably just reset the file. Oh, that's a good idea. We can just remove the file, huh? Goodbye. Let's try that again. Great idea. <laughs> All right. All right, so we did it again. <laughs> There's that file. That's a lot simpler. <laughs> OK, so uh, that's all that's in that file. That's all that that command did. Um, so we're going to get out of there. And then all you do from there is you do Lando start. And then the magic happens. Um, so this is going to take a while, and I'm not going to make you uh, sit through this. But I'll just tell you what this is going to do. Um, and the reason this is going to take a while is because there's some additional customization. <clears throat> oh, you know what? There isn't, because we just deleted that Lando file. <laughs> um, 
But this basically is is spinning up a web server locally now, um, and it's so it's spinning up uh, an nginx web server. It's spinning up uh, MariaDB, which is MySQL equivalent uh, database server, um, and it's getting it all ready uh, so that we can uh, we can run our site. So actually, there. Okay, the site already is created. That's awesome. Gives me URLs I can go to to visit the site locally. So we're gonna hop this over into our browser. And we're gonna ignore this not private thing. Uh-oh, something bad happened. What happened? Well, let's try clearing the cache. It's not gonna work. Well, I have no idea what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Poser install, you're missing an autoloader. Missing an autoloader. Yeah, that's a bit weird. So maybe a composer install? Oh, a composer install, that's a good idea. Thank you, Sean. All right, where did, I, where did my thing go? Here we go. Composer install. This is what's going to take a while. <laughs> um, well, maybe not so long, because I've already got all this stuff locally, because I've done this before. Um, so for those who have not seen composer install before, this is taking our composer.json file, which has all the dependencies that we need for our website. So that includes Drupal, it includes Drupal modules, it includes third-party libraries, um, you know, like you saw uh, from uh, Daryl. Um, and so it installs all this stuff. Uh, this is getting this all prepped. And, oh, that was pretty quick. All right, so let's try this again. I'm going to wrap up in just one minute here. So it's loading for the first time, so it makes it a little extra slow. And um, because we just downloaded the code base, we didn't download a database or anything like that, uh, this website is ready to be installed, right? This is a, a Drupal website that has not yet been installed. That's why we're seeing the Drupal installer here. Um, but this website actually has configuration um, built in <coughs> into it already in the in the Git uh, repository, and so it is possible to install um, a website that has a whole bunch of stuff beyond just Drupal core, um, kind of like a, an install profile. Uh, and so we're not going to do that because that'll take too long. But I'll just show you the option here, and it's just... <laughs> all right. So another thing I'm not going to show you. Um, but anyway, uh, we just set up a local development environment uh, by downloading something, installing it, and then running a few commands. And we've got Drupal running locally off of an existing website, uh, but we could easily uh, download the Drupal project into that directory and, and start it up fresh uh, as well. Um, from this point, you know, we would uh, ideally install from configuration, or we could have a, a database, kind of a starter database that's ready to um, to, to kind of load into our website here locally so that we can start developing. Um, so that's that's Lando. That's just like a very brief, uh, not very well <laughs> uh, presented uh, idea. But um, I don't know if anybody has any questions uh, or if we want to get into uh, chaotic socializing. I got a question for you, JD. I've been curious. Uh... I'm still a dinosaur using VMs, and I know, like, I think Lando's using more of a containerized technology, and, and most people are these days. I'm curious uh, if you want to speak to the differences, why this newer technology is better versus VM, or anything you want to say about that. Uh, sure. I'm totally not the person to respond to that question, actually. Um, I <laughs> am I'm very much a Drupal developer and very much focused on Drupal, 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 <clears throat> and setting yeah. up a local development environment. Uh, my only goal is that it's as easy as possible. And that it as closely as you know mirrors my production environment as closely as possible. Um, so I use Lando because it supports Pantheon very well, and I use Pantheon for most of my sites. Mm -hmm. And so if I use the Pantheon recipe, it will actually mirror Pantheon's production environment uh, as closely as possible. It's a very good close approximation. Um, and I I basically try to not get too involved in uh, you know a lot of the DevOps stuff and. Uh, I don't want to have to think about Docker and containerization and stuff like that. It just kind of works. But uh, maybe somebody else has a, uh, uh, a better response. <laughs> I, I like I your rationale. I don't have a better response, but one thing I will say that I've run into with Lando, so just throwing it out there for folks, 
if you're like me and when like Docker for Mac pops up and says, hey, there's an update and you just click update, right? Um, Lando doesn't love that so much. Lando <laughs> is always yeah. lagging with Docker for Mac by a good version or two. So it, I, I'm a huge proponent of Lando. I, I use it all the time. I think it's terrific. But if you use it, make sure that you continue using the whatever version of Docker for Mac that Lando comes with. Otherwise, yeah. you'll hate yourself in a horrible, horrible way. One really interesting thing is you saw him just saying Lando in it and then Lando start, right? It spun up all the separate containers that were required because it knows what Drupal's configuration looks like. So you don't have to actually do a Docker compose file, which can explain how these things interact with one another. So Docker allows you to have individual containers or a, or a orchestration component which is what Compose is. And then Kubernetes would be like spinning up all of that across an entire enterprise. But what's really interesting is Lando just says like, I need the bare bones way to do Drupal development. So like Drupal 8 requires a web server with Nginx uh, that has PHP and it also has a MariaDB database and maybe a caching server if you extend it out a little bit. And it's just like, Phoom, and there you go. <laughs> yeah, okay. And to, to your point, to your question directly, Jake, working by yourself is not necessarily better. If you know how to set up a virtual machine um, and you're happy setting up PHP and Mar MariahDB and all those things and you do it for yourself all the time, that's perfectly great. Because especially if you're a Mac user, um, Docker has to have some kind of virtual machine or a hypervisor um, anyway. Um, but like, in my company, I have a bunch of developers and they're all in their own machines. When we, when we were on Vagrant, I was constantly fixing somebody's Vagrant installation because they hadn't done a thing. Um, and containerization lets me have, make sure all my developers have exactly the same thing. Um, so that's my take on that. Yeah, that's great to hear. I, uh, I tried to organize with the team using Vagrant and, and uh, just a standard Vagrant file, but it never. I ran into the problems you had. So this sounds yep. definitely worth investigating. Thanks, guys. Um, hi, I have one more question. I was um, I was using Drupal VM for most of uh, my sites, and I started uh, using Lando maybe before a month or two. I'm on I was on Mac, and one of the problems that I got was uh, syncing the file. Your local file and Lando uh, file. There was a problem with the sync, and I have. Uh, connected with the Lando team in the Slack channel. And uh, for some reason, I could not resolve the issue, and I went back to the Drupal VM. I don't know if any of you have uh, any issues on that. Uh, when, you are, when you say syncing the files, do you mean like the files directory? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Just check it. Uh, it's, it's because of the network, because of like, you know how. Like even with the composer, if you have if your PHP memory is low, you will often get error with uh, with uh, downloading files because there are so many files. And same thing with the Lando. Um, uh, with the Lando uh, composer, I was having issues um, with the especially it's at the network. It's a problem with distinguishing the file between your Lando into the file with into the Lando and the, uh, and the file in your local. And they. I can remember. I can I can send the message in the Slack channel if you need. But there was a specific problem that I was having, uh, and I don't know if any of you have issue, uh, experienced issues like that. Uh, was the problem involving uh, a Pantheon site, or was it uh, just a no? It's uh, it's a, it's a standard. I was what I was I was also trying to customize the local URL. Like as you know, I think uh, from my understanding. When you spin up the Lando, it will have uh, like a self-certified SSL URL, local URL. Yeah. It starts with Lando dot site or whatever it is. Yep. Um, um, that was, and I was I was just playing around, um, and uh, and and the, and the network issue. Like um, maybe it's because I ha I don't know. Uh, it's because of the uh, big build. Or whatever it is, I can send you a specific uh, note, but I was having the issue. I don't know if, if that is still the case. I Otherwise, I would love to use Lando. I mean, I I, I love it. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, it's better than what I have been using Drupal VM. It's uh, Drupal VM. It's it's a uh, big. It's uh, stable. That's what I have been using Drupal VM for a long time. 
Yeah, I haven't, I haven't run into big issues. Uh, Lando definitely has become more stable recently, um, so it's worth giving another shot, I'd say. Um, but yeah. Uh, maybe I would say the issue you are having is kind of like uh, you have downloaded the edge version of the Lando. So it's kind of like not stable version. So I think that may be the one of the issue you, you're having, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I can I can post the message in the Slack channel and verify if that's still the case with the and the Drupal NYC. But uh, if that case, if that has been solved, I would love to use Lando and continue using that. But right yeah, now, I'm I think, doing, I think, uh, I think yeah. that might be a good idea. If you want to hop into Slack and and see what uh, suggestions people might have, I think that's a great place for for us to kind of continue that part. Yeah. Thank you. For sure. That's all for me. All yeah. right. Thank you, JD, for jumping in the the, the last minute. Yay. Thank you, Ramona. Yay. Well done, well done. Her first. Uh, She's her asleep now. She fell asleep while presenting. Perfect. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go back to sharing uh, the presentation real quick. Uh, while I'm doing that, um, one of our one of our founding members of Drupal NYC was able to join us because we're remote. That was Robbie that you saw talking a minute ago. He's one hey, of folks. the originals. Hey, Robbie. Yeah, I, hey, I went hey. to Drupal New York back in the day when it was hosted at MNN, Manhattan Neighborhood Network, and there were six of us. <laughs> wow. J Jacob Redding, Scott, uh, Sam Tressler, Noel Hidalgo, and there's a sixth person that we don't know who it was. We, we've we talked about this, trying to figure it out, but <laughs> it's pretty amazing that five of us are still connected. That is, that's, yeah, that's pretty good. That, that's All right. Back. Well, welcome back, Robbie. We're always happy to have you. Um, it's, great. it's great to see everybody and so many familiar faces. This is such a vibrant community and always has been. I'm so glad to see people I recognize and so many others still stepping up and organizing. It's amazing. And I like the wall hanging. <laughs> All right. So real real quick for everybody, our next meetup is going to be online again, um, May 6th. Our meetups are typically first Wednesday of the month. Um, make sure that you RSVP on meetup.com. Um, just like this meetup, tell your friends, tell your neighbors. Everyone's supposed <laughs> to be two people that they know to the meetup next time. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's our next meetup. Alex, I'll see if I can convince Elijah. Uh, I was just working with I, him. I was thinking about that about yep, 10 We need to drag back. Elijah back, yeah. We got to bring Elijah back. Uh, Maybe Eric Duran, too. <laughs> uh, that, now, now we're asking for trouble. Um, all right, call for speakers and organizers. We talked about this a little bit before. Um, if you're interested in speaking, if you're interested in helping to organize, if you you know, uh, want to bring your coworkers, your friends to, to this group, we're very, very excited. Um, to, to grow this community, um, you know, as always. So please uh, let people know about it. And um, and just for, for giggles, we have a, a, a cute picture of Ramona when she was, um, based on the color of the blanket, I'm saying a day and a half old. Um, but yeah, contact us on speak at drupalnyc.org. Uh, Drupal and one more quick reminder, um, Drupal Camp NYC, and I know that we added a, uh, um, uh, some info to this slide about the uh, uh, venue, about volunteering somewhere, I think. Maybe not. But if you want to volunteer for Drupal Camp NYC, please, please, please get in touch with the organizers. Um, get in touch with, um, with, uh, 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 with Bass, and uh, we would love to have people helping out. And that's Drupal Camp NYC. Last reminder on that. And that's that's our uh, that's our our meetup for the month. Um, please feel free to hang out in uh, in the meetup, talk with with folks if you want to. You know, bring up. I think the first topic that we kind of mentioned that maybe we want to talk about is how to help uh, continue to help support the Drupal Association, uh, given that uh, uh, DrupalCon uh, is at 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 best postponed but possibly canceled. So uh, yeah. The mics are open, the floor is yours, and uh, oh. thank you everybody for joining. Although if you do go to the DrupalCon, right after DrupalCon is Minneapolis uh, Anime Con. <laughs> Literally the right. day after. But unlike what we normally say, Alex, we can stay here because we are home. 
That's right. I usually say you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. But feel free to stay here as long as you like. So in response to that question about Drupal Association, I did post in the chat and in the community and Slack the um, information that Drupal Association recently posted. Um, and the, what, what we can do is just really simple. Um, I, I renewed my membership a little while ago. Um, if you've never had a membership with the Drupal Association, um, we need to do that. Otherwise, it's the tragedy of the commons where we're all expecting somebody else to keep Drupal.org go going. Um, no, and so uh, that's about all there's to say about it. Drupal was often known as community plumbing, right? It's code and people together that make Drupal what it is. Um, so if you haven't yet, you should you should contribute to the community if possible. Um, if it's given to you, you should give to it. Uh, as a longtime member of the community, um, I am not and haven't been doing Drupal actively for years, but I'm still, I believe, a Drupal Association member. And if not, I'll re-up. I definitely re-upped about a year or two ago, but uh, it's an important community because of its connection to open source across the board and how many people it supports. Thanks, Robbie. Yeah, it, start, it starts at 25 bucks, and they'll take whatever you can afford. So, I think it's also really important to add to the Drupal, agency, uh, Drupal Association is reaching out to agencies and trying to get some help. Um, Dries is going to do some webinar in, in the next few days you know, for DrupalCon, they're trying to get the sponsors to donate. If it's canceled, to still get the sponsorship, just so the DA has some sustainable funds. So anyone's employer who's a sponsor of DrupalCon should, you know, nudge their employer to make sure they're aware how important it is for the DA to have some of these funds. Um, yeah, this is a major problem for the DA, I think, right yeah. now. I know Neil's on the call, but when you look at the numbers and think about how important... DrupalCon is for the DA's budget. It, it's major. Um, I mean, every not for profit I know is in trouble right now. I got to step back and just say, uh, non profit, yeah. everyone's in trouble right now. I know. It's just like, yeah, I, no, everyone's in trouble. It's just some places, if you had any of your funds based on gathering of people, it's like, oh my God, it's, it's crazy. Um, hey. Every con I have now to mid-May is canceled, and I expect the mid the May ones to go, and the June ones are beginning to go already. So, like Motor City just canceled. <laughs> That's a big Comic Con, so, and um, all the big trade shows are also canceled. So we're all gonna have a rough, rough couple of while, but we have to see what we can do to help the Drupal yeah. Association out. Um, so, so yeah, I didn't uh, hop on during the community announcement, but uh, the couple of dev days, uh, we're still on. We're um, working on moving it to a virtual conference. Like that's the that's the alternative to cancellation at, at the moment. Yeah. Did you see that um, Plural Site is offering free conference accounts? Ooh. No. Yeah, so if you go to Plural Site, uh, if you don't, if, if it's not public on the site, I have it through like government stuff. But let me 